All right, Thank welcome you. back. You're watching Good Morning Nigeria, and it's happening live on the network service of the NT8. And our conversation is on the 2024 flood outlook. So let's quickly take a background report put together by Ulusheye Adeagbo before we commence our conversation. Flooding has been the most frequent natural disaster in Nigeria coming with its devastating impacts on the vulnerable population and threatening food security. Year 2024 has been predicted to have its own share of flooding again, though in different degrees. Officially present the 2024 annual flood upload to you all. This year's team promoted the use of data analytics and modeling for flood risk assessment our food security aligns with the presidential agenda on food security, which forms the forefront of this administration. I am optimistic that this year's annual flood outlook, AL4, which is tailored towards effective management of flood risk for achieving food security agenda in our dear nation, will create the much needed awareness for promoting resource planning and sustainable socio-economic development. In the year 2024, annual flood outlook, AFO, 148 local government areas in 31 states of the Federation are at risk of high flooding, while part of 249 LGAs across all 36 states and the LCT fall within the moderate flood areas. The negative impact of flood would, however, be on the decline by promoting better understanding of flood risks and ensuring appropriate mitigating measures being deployed to deal with flooding issues in Nigeria holistically. If relevant authorities, in this case in the Federal Ministry of Water Resources and Sanitation, can make efforts to deceive our water waste and the various dams that are all over the country so that we will be able to maximize our dry season farming operations. Expectations of these actors is to make communities across Nigeria flood resilient through information in the document. Thank you, Alusha Adiabo, for that report. And joining us in the studio now for the discussion is engineer Clement Inze is the Director General, Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency, NIMSA. You're welcome to the thank, program, sir. Thank you for having me. Good uh, morning, Nigerians. All right. Thank you, sir. Also, joining us is Professor Emmanuel Adano, Chairman, Technical Working Group of the Presidential Committee on the Development of Comprehensive Plan of Action for the Prevention of Flood Disaster in Nigeria. You're welcome, Prof. Thank you very much. Good morning, Nigeria. All right. All right. And we have also here with us in the studio Florence Wene Gieme. Uh, she is Director of Forecasting, Response and Mitigation, FCT Emergency Management Agency, FEMA. And it's a pleasure to have you with us once again. Thank you very much. And a very good morning to you, Nigerians. Okay. So, so, All right. so, so um, okay. Let's, let's quickly uh, start. And I'd like to start with. Uh, um, Engineer Clement Inze. I'm always calling you Dr. Inze. <laughs> <laughs> Engineer Clement Inze. I, I, I know we have, every year we talk about flood outlook. I mean, you come to the studio, we look at the flood outlook, we look at the, uh, those on the high impact list, we look at those on the flood flash list and all that and all that. But specifically with the 2024, what are the major findings of this document? Uh, thank you so much. Um, the once again, good morning, Nigerians. Like was mentioned in the introduction, you know, the clips we saw. From our prediction for 2024, as public made public yesterday by the Honorable Minister of Water Resources, um, 148 local government areas that cut across at one state in Nigeria, with you know, we'll be, we we'll suffer very high degree of flooding in the course of the year if no action, proper action is taken before time. When you and say, uh, sorry, sorry, please, when you say high degree, 
Yes. Please, can you paint a picture? Are we talking about something similar to 2012 or 2022 or even no, no, 20, worse? 2022 has been the most, the, 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 the most, uh, you know, flood in Nigeria experience. Yeah. At least if you compare it to 2012. Okay. So, it might come close to that if no major actions are taken. Then, when we say that if a local government is inundated so heavily, Maybe even if it's only three in Nigeria, for instance, that is brought under the flood, the impact will be so much when you talk about the losses mm. as against having a, a um, port, small, small, a pocket of it in different locations. The severity could be so high in a particular location that uh, the impact will be, will be unimaginable. And aside from that, we are having, from our prediction also, 249 local governments that will cut across the entire 36 states of Nigeria and the FCT. So the, the degree will be mild. However, all things are subject to the vagaries of uh, weather or climate change and also human activities in terms of our, what we do in our environment. Could aggravate, maybe a place we say is going to be mild, for instance, could turn out eventually to be of high degree depending on the climate situation and the, what human beings are doing in the environment. Hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, DG. Uh, now, let, let, let me go to Professor Adanu now. Uh, it, from the words of the minister, uh, it, it's like uh, there is a call for emergency. And he, he said that he has also written to state governors, you know, concerning the situation at hand. What do you think the state government governors should do? What are you expecting from them, having received this uh, information? Yeah, let, let, let me just go a bit back. After 2012, the, the Nigerian Hydrological Services Agency started this after this uh, annual flood outage. After 2013, so from 2013. The date they've been doing it now. The accuracy in their prediction is between 70 and 75, which is very good. Now, if we interpret what they predicted with what we have experienced, yes, yes. it is substantial for us to take one I mean, heed to the one in the predict. Now, over, I think that was yesterday, was either the 13th or the 12th. Mm -hmm. now, and states have been informed all this while because any time the prediction was coming up, they were going to find it and they know. If the, the minister is informing the states to take work, they should know even before yesterday that certain responsibilities are there. Now, what agency of Nigeria, for instance, is responsible for a blockage of your sink in the kitchen? What? There are certain things you must do in your house to make sure you don't get flooded. So if the federal government is advising the state, I think the state too, that bear the consequences of this, should be well out after predictions for over 12, 13 years. You know, so, but all the same, it is still the responsibility of the government, the minister to inform the states, to tell them this is what we have been examining, and inform them. But I believe the states also should take heed. Let me tell you, I was the chairman of the comprehensive master plan. There were two states that were very, very important in Nigeria, and they took this in so seriously. Number one in the country is Jigawa. Jigawa never joked with flooding issues. Why? It is an environment that ordinarily we would think we won't have water. But because of the drainage pattern in the area, the little water that comes at a time, whether it's short period, gets shared within this because no path for them to try to flood it. And the law has been very, very uh, proactive. Okay. They attended our meetings severally and they, they are doing certain things. The Federal Ministry of Water Resources, through our agency, the National Water Resources, we work a lot with them. And the law is doing it. Second one is uh, Baisa. These are two data environments. Yes, of course, Baisa is 95% yes, yes, water. So they have two. The delta in the inland, the delta down there, 
Bryson knows that after all the collection of water from about five hydrological areas upstream, it will discharge to them. Huh? So they are very worried. And we have a small MOU with them, like water resources, we are going to work together with them. There are many other states that have this problem. After every flood, let me tell you, the National Water Resources Institute goes to assess and write reports to the United states. That's what I was, I was going to ask you, water. sir. I was going to ask you, because you mentioned Bayelsa, and again this year, Bayelsa is on the list. Yes. So is, is there, over the years, is, is there visible, recognizable trend, emerging trend, why these states? St yes. yes. That was the next thing I was going to come up yeah. If you take the AFO, you know there are tank criers in uh, NISA. Mm. And I told you that 65 to 70 percent of their prediction is right. If they've done it 12 times, we have simulated them. Over the years, we have simulated there are areas that are consistently flooded every year. Whether the flood is small or not, they are flooded, mm -hmm. and we have them identified. Mm -hmm. So, why wouldn't those states take heed? Because consistently, they are flooded. Whether the flooding is mild or this, as it is, is just telling us, there are areas that can get flooded severely, mm -hmm. others just mildly. But if there are some that are consistently, whether my flood or flooded, <coughs> what do we do? The comprehensive master plan that we produced took care of all of this. He was also a member. That's how he's a member. Okay. It took care of all this. But, but, okay. We would have loved to. Sorry. We, 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 we would. Mm. Would like you to continue, but uh, we need to adjust one or two things uh, concerning your mic. But while the engineers are working on that, we'll, we'll, let's come yes, to, yes, to, to, uh, Florence. to to Florence. Uh, that, the the issue of uh, you know, uh, it, the pr prof says something that you know when we hear news of flooding and all that, even besides states as individuals, there are some responsibilities, there are some duties, there are some things that we need to do to guide against flood so that to prevent you know loss of lives uh, the, i mean uh, erosion of homes and all that so we see this every year year in year out can, how can we prevent another round of flood this year so that uh, what step do you think individuals and local government should take concerning this situation yes um it's uh, this is something that like you said happens year in year out and uh, we keep improving. Right now, what we have, every state is supposed to have a state emergency management agency. And down to the local government level, we have local emergency committee. But a lot of states, like FCT, we have gone ahead to put in place disaster marshals down to the grassroots, volunteers, vanguards, and local divers. We have put all these um structures in place okay. and what we have done is that we have built their capacity and at the same time we carried out the hazard mapping and vulnerability and capacity assessment in the six area councils in the fct and that simply means we are carrying the community along now we have been able to help them to identify the common hazards within their environment within their community in each area council we have been able to identify the common hazard that eventually emanates to a disaster and leads to loss of lives and properties. So having done that, we went ahead to make sure we put structures in place, preventive measures. And the measures that cannot be prevented, we have put mitigative measures in place as well. And at the same time, like I said, we have built their capacity to make sure that they are first responders because it is expected that when something happens in an environment or within a community, mm. members of that community automatically becomes the first respondents before the arrival of the uh, emergency management committee or management agency or the local emergency management committee of that area council. And that is why we have built their capacity in a way of putting vanguards, training the vanguards, okay. the volunteers, okay. disaster marshals, we have really trained them. And even their town criers, we are really using them. 
So before our arrival, they are the first respondents and they would know the next step to take, what to do before our arrival. And that is why we make sure that our response time is five minutes. Because Clarence, before, before, before you talk about response, I, 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 like, I like, because I was going to ask you, yes. You know, FCT is again on the on the, on the list, yeah. and, yes. and I mean, this is the capital city. So, if FCT doesn't have structures to show, you know, over the years, to show that you are prepared, I mean, <laughs> then we shouldn't expect so much. But good, you have talked about the uh, disaster marshals. I'm interested in the hazard mapping yes. and how you have been able to prepare, you know, uh, people within those. Uh, area yes, yes. identified areas. How have you prepared them to anticipate 2024? Hopefully, we, we shouldn't we, we shouldn't hear of you know incidents like uh, those in um, um, trade, trade mall. Trade mall, yes. <laughs> and uh, in the FC, in the FCT here, there's a particular Lokogoma. yes, local goma. We, yes. we that very well. Mm -hmm. What the structures we have put in place even before the flood outlook. What we have done is that we have vulnerable roads that are always affected. What we do is we have temporary barricades there. And do, right you have now, the, do you have them now? We have them in place already. Already. We okay. have them. When the rain intensifies, we block such roads. But for now, we have temporary barricades that we unblock when we feel it is safe for them to walk across or to, uh, for vehicular movements. But a place like Dokogoma, Dokongada in particular, about eight days ago, that road has been completely barricaded. We have given them an, another access road. They will go through Sunnyville or Sun City. There are two roads there. And there is another access road within FR Estate that is within that axis too. So we have blocked that road completely. Um, I'm surprised you don't have the video clip here because NTA covered it. The no, road you, is on the verge of collapsing. The box culvert at that location. Okay. You will see the cracks. You will see the shoulders already sinking. So what we did was because on norm, it's a normal routine. It's a tradition that after every heavy downpour, farmer team carries out an assessment. We go out early hours, immediately after the rains, we go out, carry out an assessment, and give a situation report of such locations, such vulnerable locations, in all the six area councils. And that is why we have created awareness and giving them that, telling them the access road they are supposed to use, just in case we have to barricade these roads, and we have our staff on standby 247. Our staff, uh, FEMA response team, in collaboration with our volunteers, bankers, and disaster marshals, we have them cut across the six area council on standby. Once it rains, mm. that's okay. what we do. We, are, we have some visuals. We, ha we have some visuals. So I'm not sure this is. That is Dogongada. That is, okay. okay. That's the, the Along Doko, um, Okay, so this place Doko is this now. It's completely barricaded. Barricaded, okay. Yes. All right. Okay. okay. So please. From vehicular movement. Yes. Yeah, so okay. I, I, I think you also need to get are, the are you information. Across. across to those who, who do not reside within these areas, maybe it, visitors it has been on air, okay. on radio, okay. social media. We Is it have an posted empty? it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you are seeing now. On it, no, 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 no. You, it, it, if it's not NTA an NTA, now. you have not done. You have not done enough awareness, honestly, because NTA reaches the people you want. The grassroots. Exactly. So yes, you should. we have it on Channel Five. Channel Five gets to the grassroots. Uh -huh. okay. We have our jingles uh -huh. and all this. Okay, you can. Uh, okay. Okay. Right. Right. You can be as okay. Yes. Okay. 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 All right. <laughs> okay. Let's let's come back to the to, to the DG. Okay, DG. Uh, the, the the current outlook all is like uh, almost all the states, you know, will be affected when when it comes to this flood. Now, thirty one states, uh, to be precise. What do you think? What, what, what does it tell you? Well, we're, first and foremost, we must be home with this truth. So long as there is rainfall, there has to be flood. What we are concerned about is the disaster aspect of it. The outlook has come out. 
it had been like minister mentioned yesterday, honorable minister. The governors of the states have been put on red alert. Letters have been written to them. If these documents have been made available, certainly we we'll get to them the copies, the hard copies. Some copies are also available on the website. So it is expected that the disaster associated with the flooding each year, the states should be able to take certain measures ahead of time. Because these things happen within localities, within in their own catchments. And there are other levels of government, like we have local governments. People come from, we have councillors, chairmen, and so on and so forth. This thing should be cascaded. Yeah. Having come from the federal level to, to the state, States. they should be able to disseminate it to, their, to the local governments and then the council wards as well. Like I mentioned yesterday, at the federal level, so much is being done by various actors in terms of, like, I think it was in February okay. that the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMET, came out to tell us about the uh, climate predictions, in particular rainfall or precipitation, amount of rainfall, onset date, cessation date, whether it will be above normal, it will be normal. No state does it. NISA also has come out to say its own with regards to translating any kind of rainfall we are going to anticipate this year into flooding. And they have been disseminated. No state does forecast about flood incidents in Nigeria, but the federal government does it. So it is better that these tools should be able to be working tools in the hands of state governments to now get the messages down to the grassroots. Like what we are doing here also is the federal government is doing it. In terms of, I mean, the NTA disseminating the information to the people of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So let the states take ownership. What should be done has been spelled out. And not even, even if we not written, they know they see it, they know it in their states. And mm -hmm. we, will, we will get to, to really what should be done. I, I like because when you were speaking, uh, when you started speaking, you talked about two factors, you know, that could affect, you know, the the volume of you know flood this year, climate change and human factor. We I mean human factor we all know what we are. But I'm I'm just wondering what do we anticipate in terms of uh, climate change, to what extent, you know, do we anticipate its impacts in the in the volume of flood? Or what, see, what, what, there, what are the are, degrees? Uh, yes. Professor, I don't mention that about Jigawa in his uh, opening mm. remarks. Mm. I was in Jigawa in 2018, 2000, 2022. One very elderly man was talking about uh, that for over 53 years, they never seen flood where he is. For the first time, the place was overrun by flood. I mean, he over, should be over close to 80 years of age. Hmm. That he had never seen this thing before. In 2022, we're talking about climate change. Yeah. A place like Medugri, we normally receive about maybe 500 millimeters of rainfall for the whole year. But on a single day, a, a few hours, 209 millimeters of rainfall. That was the experience. And uh, when you have such a magnitude of rainfall within a short period of time, it will aggravate flooding. But there is, they, they, they didn't give enough time. Maybe if that amount of rainfall has fallen over maybe five days, eight days, ten days, one month, that 209 millimeter of rainfall, mm. you will see the impact because it will gradual, gradually dis, uh, dissipate. But it coming down in a few hours in a day, we have very serious impact in terms of flooding. Mm. Talking about climate change. So what yes. we are saying, we do the best we can to interrogate nature, to see ahead of time, like NIMET did their own, to tell you, rain will start on this date, maybe plus or minus five days. Mm. It will end on this social date, plus or minus five days. This is, this is the volume of uh, rainfall you, you should be expecting. Mm. So that's the best we can do. Anything could change. That was somebody was asking, that I was asked yesterday, can't you do it uh, daily? Make your forecast daily. I say, yes, NIMED does its own daily. 
gives you information they every day. It, yes. But ours is during the during the um, rainy season that flooding happens, and that's when we do our own. So we try to give our own on weekly basis. But with the improvement on the facilities available to us, mm -hmm. we can equally issue mm -hmm. such a, you know on a daily basis. So, so states states that are not captured under with a high risk or low or, yes. or low risk. Okay. What's what's special about those states? Why, why why are they not prone to flooding? See, there are a lot of things we consider in the prediction or the modeling we do. Mm -hmm. We measure the rivers in Nigeria. We talk about the river system of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We talk about the geology, the topography, and then the, the issue of rainfall as predicted already by NIMET. So these are some of the things that we could that will and as said, this place will be highly dis disposed to mm -hmm. high flooding or flood incident or not. So these are some of the things that you know uh, that could cause this place to be highly flooded or not be flooded. Mm. Then talk also about the the, the human activities as well. Mm. All right, let's let's go back to uh, Professor Adam now. I mean, I think your mic is um, adjusted <laughs> now, so you, probably you can just um, uh, continue from where you stopped. You know, because we had to stop your thought flow at that particular point in time. So you were talking about the responsibility of the state. What is expected of the state? Well, I think uh, since they have just uh, just uh, summarized everything. The states should look at the federal government as belonging to the federal government is just a combination of states. All we do at the federal at the federal level is to do the prediction and tell them where all the areas going to be affected are mentioned in states and local governments. And not just in federal government, and states and local government. And this keeps happening, I think I think twelve or thirteen times now every year. We've been doing this. And we tell them. Now, what can states do? At what level? Now, let me give you an example of what is going on in the FCT today. FCT is being paved seriously with construction of good roads and all these things. So, thousands of hectares are going to be paved. No infiltration when it rains, water will just flow over the beautiful roads. Estates are coming up. Now, if you check the roads, they have drainage, drainages attached to them. Most of them just drain from the road into the town because we have streams here within the town. It's going to convey this. The essays also are paving the roofs, the roads, and all this. So these waters will never get into the ground. They will now flow as overland flow. Where do they go to? So we have not done a comprehensive on the, and the total volume of water that you are paving based on the annual rainfall in Abuja. We can calculate it for any square area of water it is. You know how much water you are preventing from entering the ground and you are discharging to the drainage. Is the drainage capable to convey this? If it does within the town, it's going to yield somewhere else, outside the town. Being outside the town doesn't mean it's not a flooded environment. Villages live around it. So flooding is just general. So we should also look at the amount of water we are now preventing from sinking into the ground and discharging as overland flow anywhere within the town and outside the town. And the type of drainage too, and because the type what, of what drainage, we get there is sufficient to convey this. It is very important. And I don't know whether the FCT has looked at that environment thoroughly. It is very, very important. I remember there was flooding in Guagalada one year. The National Water Resource Institute, we did satellite this in design and found the level of flooding, gave the report to development control. And they use it to move people from the environment. It was very proactive. We just dashed them. That they should try and do that now in the FCT. In the FCT. It is very important. The more development you do, the more water you make available for yourself in terms of overland flow. So in flooding, that is very important. Absolutely. Very, very important. Absolutely, Professor Okay, Daniel, thank okay, you. okay. Pro, Prof, I, I still want to, because you know, it is, they said that rise in sea levels and tidal surge were also pre predicted uh, in coastal and riverine areas. 
So how can we prevent this turbulence on our oceans and seas? If we can't, what are the most realistic solutions? Now, tidal movement is not controlled by it's controlled by the moon. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's the moon that draws the water, the tides are they respond to moon. It's an I think a frequency of about eleven hours, forty five minutes every year. It moves and comes. Now we have littoral environments. Those are the environments where the ocean water moves into the land, then back to its permanent uh, water level. That's the littoral environment. This keeps happening. And it keeps happening because the moon is responsible. It's not solar, it's lunar. Now, in a situation like that, what we do is that we study the, the behavior very well and respond to it because you cannot control it. Yeah. Now, if you have tides at a time, the tides move in and out. These are transgressions, they see transgressions and regressions transgressions and regressions. If you want to maximize the economy of tidal movement, tidal movement, because it moves and you know the frequency, you can also generate electricity from tides. Okay. Yeah. Then make sure that nobody settles in an environment that tides are very aggressive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, when the fresh water moves from inland and the tides are coming inland, there is that resistance. So when the two tides meet, the water, fresh water coming from inland down to the ocean, the ocean is rejecting it because the tides are pushing. So an environment is created also, which is a brackish environment, which is very nice also. It has the ecosystem and all this. I, I, we I, must I, live within it. There are certain things we cannot do with the tides. I haven't been to Lagos in, in, in a while. I'm just wondering, you know, the Babbage, Yes. The Bad Beach is a good example of what, you know, it, it took the Lagos State Government many, many years to be able to contain, you know, the, the, the Bad Beach from, yes, taking over the whole, the, the, the whole of Victoria yeah, Island. Of Victoria <laughs> I, I, Island. <laughs> that, oh, fortunately for us, for, for the NTA, because NTA that's where we're, we're also <laughs> located. But let me come back to Florence. Uh, because uh, Adam said something. Yes. In fact, he directed a whole lot yes. to, to the FCT. Yes. And I quite agree with him. It, it would appear that the FCT is focusing more on the uh, traditionally known, you know, flood-prone areas. So you're concentrating your attention on those areas. You forget the satellite towns, just like he said. If you go to Yaya Aziz, Jikwe Aziz, you will find, I don't know whether they're drainage, I don't know whether to call them drainages or gutters, with refuse being un, you know, uncollected. You find, in fact, some of them are blocking the, the, the so it, it hasn't shown that their city is really prepared to tackle. Of course, yes. FCT is prepared. You just heard what he said. I was ready to respond yes. to all the points that he, he raised, raised about the FCT. Yes, you can see that um, development control, like he said, development control swing into action and make sure they remove all obstructions in Gwagwalada Aziz. That area is called Angwandudu and Abatua. That was where we had the flooding that year. And we also had in Giri. Then places like Lugwe that we are talking about, already infrastructures, they are already working on the infrastructures. We are already expanding the box culverts. There are a lot of box culverts that are below standard. The size is not adequate enough to curtail the volume of water okay. within that axis. So the Honorable Minister has graciously given the go-ahead that all the satellite towns, the, the Department of Satellite Town Development, are already working. Places that are supposed to have river bridges, and they will provide them with river bridges and remove, remove the box COVID. Those that are on a low plane are going to be increased to a higher level. And this, the, the ones that the, the size of the box COVID are small, they are going to be changed to give an adequate size that can control the volume of water within that axis. So it's not just within the capital city that we are working. 
you have still not talked about the Nyanya axis where you have. We have gone. We have listened. The refuse. The 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 refuse. Sorry, just just hold on. The 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 heap or piles. I don't know what to call it. Mountains of refuse are not collected and so they are letting everything they are they, they are already evacuating this you see it's something that is done on daily basis environmental protection board and the area councils we have people that are in charge of the environment in all the area six area councils and every on daily basis they evacuate these waste products that have been dumped indiscriminately they keep the silting the drainages places that don't have drainages they have been provided with drainages now they're already working in all the six area councils not just within the capital city all these places have been taken care of within some locations that waste products have completely blocked the waterways they are being desilted yesterday immediately after the flood outlook presentation the coordinator of, of um, the, the Metropol uh, Metropolitan uh, Committee Council called us, all operational departments, immediately after when I left the um, flood outlook presentation. He called us immediately and we went there. I gave a report of the flood outlook, how it will affect the FCT. And every head of department, every director of all these operational departments gave their own reports how they have strategized, where they have started, where they are yet to get to. And he quickly asked them, he said, look, from tomorrow, swing into action, go to the satellite towns that you have not gotten to. And like I told you, we have, um, uh, we have our volunteers and vanguards, we have town criers that we are using. And this morning before I came here, I call all the six area councils. Mm -hmm. We send them messages. We have a CUG that we are using with the, alongside with our representatives there in different communities. So what would be your what would be your response if someone, you know, should ask you, um, what do you expect to happen within the FCT in terms of you know, I mean with regards to the uh, outlook. Flood outlook. Yes. What yes. would be your own expectation? Yes, we are agreed. FCT mm. is at the moderate flood risk, but that notwithstanding, we are prepared. We are trying. That is why we are trying to put things in place, put structures in place, because the surrounding states, the boundary states, are on the high risk. Kogi is on the high risk. Niger is on the high risk. Mm. Kaduna is on the high risk. Nasara is on the high risk. All surrounding states. So. That doesn't mean that we are going to sleep. Engineer okay, okay, okay. 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 and yeah. yeah. wants to say uh, something. So we are working. Uh, exactly. Uh, uh, yes. yes. So, so we, are, we are well prepared. Right away, right now, we are removing structures that are obstructing free flow of water. You recall that in 2022, despite the number of states that recorded loss of lives, in their states due to flooding. FCT never recorded any. And that was because of the structures we were able to put in place. We were well prepared and we had our di local mm -hmm. divers and Last year? 2022. 2022. 2022. Sorry, sorry. 2022. Yes. You see, like the issue of trade more, we carried out a lot of assessment. Apart from the fact that trade more, the houses are built on waterways. We have marked 116 houses that are obstructing the free flow of water. We have also discovered that there are estates behind Trade Mall. That place is called Lube Village. Those, uh, that village, they have estates. There are people who have encroached or encroached on the waterways. They try to acquire more land and they have built retaining walls. All those walls have been demolished. They have been brought down and the debris have been cleared. So you can see that all hands are on deck. We are working. Despite the fact that we are on a moderate flood risk, because of what I have just mentioned, we are surrounded. That that okay, Even okay. if it doesn't rain heavily in the FCT. The moderation is relative. We can have 
river flooding. Relatively moderate okay, risk. Okay, 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 Prof, you want to say something? <laughs> yes, because just, just I, want to for, I want to follow up yes, on, yes, on yes, her yes, question. Yes, but, uh, but, 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 yes. 2022, you say you are well prepared for it. <laughs> you, are, you are not. <laughs> you are just lucky <laughs> you didn't lucky. come there. <laughs> now, uh, the reason why I'm saying this is this. Now, I say that your prediction is about 75 or seventy percent completed. There is still a percentage that is not mm. accounted for, yes. and those percentages can be variables in any kind of prediction. Okay. Now he is here in the, and I always give this example. Twenty, I think two thousand eighteen, they say Jigawa or Casina. Casina yes. was not going to be part of the flooded environment. But the first flood we had in Nigeria was in Casina. Mm. Yeah. Remember, we had to go there. A lot of people died. Yeah. About 61 yeah. or so mm. died. But in the prediction, they said it was not was going out to of it. So we still accommodate that as part of the variables, the variables in, in predictions. Are are, yes, yes. Predictions. yes. In 2022, in 2022, you are, it's not that you are prepared. The dynamics of flood did not come the way it should have come in the FCT. Now, trade more. It, it got flooded. Isn't it? Mm. There was no prediction for it. For the trade mall. There were predictions. No, that, uh, no, what I'm FCT saying is it's not specific. It was not specific. It, it, it was not, not specific. trade mall specific. It's, yes. Not but trade mall, the, but the area council, AMA. Yes. AMA. Was, there was a prediction. No, the AMA prediction from AFO. We're discussing, I, I we're discussing our prediction from AFO. This is what I'm talking about. If they say FCT mm. may be affected now, we should be prepared. If you're lucky, it may not be affected because of the mm -hmm. dynamics. Because the principle they use for prediction, they told you, he told you, mm -hmm. they use geology, rainfall, yes. rivers, rivers and system. all, this. and then the soil use mm -hmm. and all this. But if you do not follow some of these things strictly, you can get flooded when the prediction doesn't even affect you. Mm -hmm. You see, so it's a lot of things you put together. Mm. But the the level at which they are telling us now is very important. Okay. It might be more than the number they, they've given they us. Because climate change... Yes, because he has, he has given yes. that caveat, yes. that Thank climate you. change. change. Yes. Yes. So anything, anything can happen. Anything climate can change happen. has come yes. to stay. So, so those states that have not been not on the list yet, you yes. don't think... Yes. They, they, they should not fold their arms. Yes. Yeah, yeah, arms, arms. arms. That exactly. the apple has relieved them of all the consequences. Mm -hmm. no. anyway, anyway, most of the states have been folding their arms. We'll get to that anyway to so, see so if this think, will wake them up. I think we should get up and look at mm -hmm. We had Give a comprehensive, a comprehensive master plan for this okay. in our report. Okay. And the states' responsibilities are given, those who should come, at what level and all this. Please, we would like you to And the actions to yes. be taken. Yes. yes. You know? yes. Just, just one quick one, please. You see... Why I said we were prepared that 2022? Because we stationed our rescue team and, and divers at the vulnerable locations. And what happened was that in a at a location where somebody almost got drowned with his car, yeah. we quickly rescued that person. So if we were not prepared, we wouldn't have had our rescue team stationed at that location. And not just that location, but in at different locations cut across the six area councils. So okay. we were able to rescue them. Those that lost their lives last year, our rescue team were there. They beckoned on them. They insisted. They told them, do not go, do not cross, do not pass there. Dogongada and Biazi, where we had motorcyclists. We, they were warned. Hmm. This you one, know, this were avoidable. This, this avoidable was an avoidable death. death. You know, I would, okay. I, would I would like, I would like, yes, Florence, I, I would, I would like Prof and Engineer Nze, because we keep, you, you keep talking, we're prepared, we're prepared. <laughs> Stay prepared. So I like for us to understand the context of preparation. What is being prepared for flood disaster? How do you prepare? Yes, that, let me start with you. See, um, first and foremost is what we are doing in terms of uh, like what we did yesterday to come with the, a kind of holistic report of the likelihood of what, what will happen in the course of the year and having been disseminated first of all it's knowledge having known what is going to confront you most likely that is one this awareness that has been created now 
we expect, just as the FCT has been saying, this thing can be duplicated in the states. When I have the opportunity to speak at times, I will mention that the, the states that are working in terms of getting prepared, taking necessary actions, visible actions, is FCT. No, taking FCT as others, uh, that's the condition that has a, a certain emergency management agencies. Yes, they have their own. So we expect that some of these that have been mentioned by the uh, Mr. Florence of what the FCT is doing. That's what we expect the states to do. Sometime last year or two years ago, it was in the, in the month of August that the state governor was shouting and giving instruction to a contractor to finish drainage construction in the Delta. That's not the right time to do such a thing. So that should have been done sometime in November up to March to do your, uh, you know, uh, remove debris, construct drainages where they do not exist. After each flooding season or rainy season, naturally you see the flood marks mm -hmm. on the bridges, mm -hmm. on the trees by the river banks, mm -hmm. telling you this is our territory, the flood is telling you. <laughs> don't encroach anything. What is, so still should be able to remove whatever structures that you will find within such perimeters of the rivers or on the road. Like I said, for the, the uh, Professor Adano, one of their projects is that of uh, uh, erecting flood marks across mm. vulnerable locations in look, Nigeria. Look at, look, just look at this. This is whereby, okay, whereby after each rainy season, flooding season, you will see the highest mark of the flood in such a location, which you cannot extrapolate. It will, it will tell you within this range. No structure should come there. Mm -hmm. Or if anything ever is, is coming, there should not be a permanent structure. People should go and start building their houses to live mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. So, awareness creation, deceiving small canals, removing structures that are imped uh, creating impediment to the free flow of flood. Like she mentioned about uh, where you use co bus covert as a bridge. You can mm -hmm. remove it and put a proper bridge. Raise the height. So that um, you will see some video clips whereby a, a vehicle, maybe even a CVU, crossing a pond of water, maybe moving water. Mm -hmm. Before you know it, you don't know that the place is, the flood has taken over. And uh, even six inches or one foot of moving flood can carry anything. Yes. Then you want to wade through. Either the bridge is already submerged, will be carried away. So such bridges that are not adequate should be raise the should be removed and their height raised raised. I remember uh, CCECC that is consulting some railway lines came to our office looking for data because they are going to pass through so many rivers several kilometers they are going to build the railway line. So they want to know what have been the highest uh, flood level on these rivers over the years, maybe about 13, 30 years, 40 years. So such we had them the design of the bridges to know how to set, you know, to raise the height, so that in the case of flood, no matter the, the, how much it is, it won't submerge the bridges upon which the uh, the train will pass. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, so let's 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 get your own uh, uh, contribution to this. Uh, how do you think the state should be prepared for this uh, uh, flood? Well, you know, flooding is uh, something you can never stop. And uh, when we're trying to produce a comprehensive master plan for prevention, we took the positive aspects of flood as well as the negative aspects. And as I said there once, it is the only disaster that has both positive and negative. So in trying to prevent the flooding, you can harness the water for other uses. Okay. Now, when we, when we had the 2022 flooding, I remember we went around the whole country. And I remember in Makodi, somebody told me that this water from um, this flooding is very helpful. Okay. And I said, do you mind if government relocates you from here? They said they will not take it. But they must stay here. So I said, why? He said the resources are within the valley put the water, the fish, the land, and everything. After the flood, they will come back and do their own work. So that's the positive aspect. Now, but he said to me, he said, sir, 
Can you prevent the water coming as much as it has come in 2022? He's not saying that mm. we should prevent water coming at all. At all. Mm. Just yes. to reduce From the flow. Reduce it. Yes. So we have also designs for the reduction of the water. So that the balance that is left is good for them. So in trying to do any effect of prevention, we should also look at the positive aspect of it. Now, as uh, engineers have said, laws and laws of enlightenment programs have been going on. But what do we do? How do we tell them what not to do? And we also realize that because we think we are highly educated and all these things, we don't listen to them. But when we went there, we learned a lot from the people. Okay. Because they have adapted sufficiently to this over years. And they know what to do. When the flood is coming, they know where to go. After the flood, they will come immediately. We went after the flood. They are already back to the environment, trying to harness the positive aspect of the flooding immediately. So we ask them, what do we do? So they tell us exactly when to plant, what to do, and all this. That the flooding is very nice, but it shouldn't be as much as... Yes. So in trying also to mitigate the effect of flooding, in the FCT, for instance, we can find environments that the flood water that is not devastating can be harnessed for use in the FCT. Gardens and all these things. Absolutely. So, so we have to be very careful in okay. trying to totally mitigate. Yes. 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 We should also so, use... So, so that we, we, don't, we don't shoot ourselves. Yes. Yes. You know yes. why, Professor Adano, I, I like the angle you have brought. That's because my, my next question will be on how basically farmers you know because over the years we've talked about how the, the the impact of this outlook on what farmers do you know and and how they do you know their work and we know that the first lady of nigeria is you know going all over the country empowering women farmers and that's because she wants you know food uh production to to increase i mean yesterday also we saw in the, in the in the southwest empowering Ogo you know state. Ogo state <clears throat> we saw in the northwest and and all that so a lot of women are being encouraged to do farming what kind of advice would you know uh, uh, nisa and nimet and all the authorities that are, that have come together to bring this up what kind of advice would you give those women what kind of food crops should they you know um, should they avoid what food crops are prone to flooding? What can they do and all that? I, I think I should start with you. You know, in the cities where you and I live, enlightened people and all these, we're the ones that eat vegetables and we're the ones that don't farm at all. <laughs> That's true. You see? But we like to eat all this fresh, but we don't farm. Now you are pushing it to the villagers or the women to do. The women in the cities can do it. When government provides environment for them, because there are some areas who can dissipate the flood very beautifully along parks and all these things. Then they encourage park owners to plant some of these things. They are not harmful to the environment. So vegetables can come from there. Women can, you know, women are more are better managers of most no, of she, the No, the first lady is also doing that because she has, she, there's a competition uh, the advert has been running an NTA. Yes. Every home a garden. Thank so you. it's not it's that's not what, restricted to it's not restricted to rural. Yes. 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 But what I'm saying is these women now that are that have been asked to do farming, you know, to contribute their quota specifically, with this flood outlook, how can they manage, you know? Well, the flood outlook is not devastating all. The flood is telling yes. you, say, oh, mild environments and all this. Mm -hmm. But we can also try to provide flood waters. This is what I'm saying. By directing some of the water from drainages into certain environments that can be converted to farms for the women yeah. in the town. Like the FCT, I give an example of. A lot of water is going to be generated this year because of the roads they are constructing, the pavement and all this within the town. And if you go to FCT, like Area 1, Zone D, those zones are separated by majorly valleys. 
Mm. But just before take. we take so, our break, so, are there specific crops that they should avoid? Avoid? Yes. Because of planting. planting. Uh, I think mm -hmm. that's the Yes. Terms of agriculture. Yeah. Has various uh, species of crops. Yes. Okay. In, whether it is beans or maize and so on and so forth. So yes. of them can mature within a certain seeds. period of the year yes. before yes. the flood will come. Okay. And then for the fact I think I remember what happened in KB State. After the flood in the of 2018, where they lost a lot, because KB State is the first entry of Niger yes, into Nigeria. And the, one of the biggest uh, farming states in Nigeria, especially, especially rice. Now they were provided with some uh, inputs. Mm -hmm so that they were able to recover the losses they incurred mm -hmm. when the flood came. I mean, when the flood had receded, the kind of uh, um, species of crop was given to them to farm. Through the central bank. Mm -hmm. I know that I know that's a, a, an improved species of that beans. Can, even if it's beans. Can, but that can yeah, mature within 40 early days. Okay. Yes, early maturing seeds. Yes, early maturing seeds. Within yes. 40 days okay. for beans. There's a special that can, you can have, you know, plant and harvest. Maybe we are supposed so to have been doing about four times, three times in a year. You could still achieve it even after the flooding season, depending mm -hmm. on the kind of special you, yeah. you are provided with. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll, we'll continue with our conversation. Let's take a break now. Uh, the conversation continues. Stay with us. Yeah, yo. Thank you for staying with us. We are still looking at the uh, 2024 outlook for the flood in Nigeria. And our guest is still here. So let's uh, start with Florence this time around. You know, year in, year out, we hear of, you know, uh, people being displaced by this flooding. And government will say, okay, we are moving you because, you know, because of flooding and all that. And many of these people, many of these residents hardly have alternative. They don't know where to go to. How do you manage the plight of those people? Yes, thank you very much. You see, Prof. Eli earlier on mentioned it, what happened in Benue, how they refused to move. You know, we have identified higher grounds. And when we advise them to move, we tell them, we're not taking this land from you. They tell us that it's their ancestral home mm -hmm. and they cannot move. It's not as if we have not identified higher grounds. We identified higher grounds and we gave them options of living in tents or we give them temporary shelters that they will use but they are adamant and what did i say from the beginning i said we are not collecting this land from you we advise them okay since this is what happens this place is a swampy area these are the kind of uh, crops that you use just plant these crops there within this period, so so and so period to so so and so period that we have all discussed about the early maturing seedlings and the kind of seeds that you're supposed, the kind of uh, uh, farm produce that you're supposed to farm in swampy areas like rice, cocoa yam and others, sugarcane, banana plantain. We advise them, but they will tell you they cannot leave that place. So what we have succeeded in doing is that we convince them that during the rainy season, please just move to higher grounds. If you don't want to relocate completely, like you said, move to your relatives. Or if you don't want us to give you all these small, small houses, they say they cannot live in this kind of houses. We have tents that have solar panels and mosquito repellents that we no ma we are ready to mount them at higher grounds for them, but they will tell you they are not going. You know so what? We are trying our best yes. to see what we can do. Okay. Right now, there are two things, two projects that we have proposed, and they are already working on it. One, the higher grounds we have identified, it's going to be a, a large parcel of land that they are going to build permanent structures, mm -hmm. not in form of temporary structures, mm -hmm so that during the rainy season we go to such vulnerable and evacuate communities them. evacuate them yes. to such locations mm -hmm. that is one secondly he mentioned something about dams mm -hmm. in s city what we have done we have agreed that instead of wasting the flood water that just run the, the the overflowing water that runs we are already working on dams from karshi axis 
there's a dam that they're already building there. The Jabi Lake Dam, we are trying to expand it and follow that same route to other locations. We have Lower Usma Dam. We are trying to expand that to follow that route to uh, Day Day. You recall in 20, was it 2018 or 2019? We lost four lives in Day Day because of the people who are living by the river bank. Okay. They were sleeping. The flood came at night. A man lost three of his wives and a daughter from one family because his house was on a very low plain just by the river bank. So that river is the one that we have traced that river to Lua Usman Dami to Pape going down like that and down to Guagualada. So they are working on how to get an additional dam there. Then Abaji, at Abaji Aziz towards Yabatu, we are working on getting, because these are some of the flood prone areas that we have. They are very vulnerable. So we are all by the grace of God. And you know our minister is somebody who loves projects. Mr. Project, I'm very sure. But Florence, I'm, you, going, I'm, do, I'm do going you to walk? give you. I'm going to give you an invoice for all the yes, things. For yes, yes, <laughs> yes, for all the adverts. I'm going do, to give you an invoice. Do, like, do you work so, with Nema? Uh -huh. Do you collaborate yes, with we, Nema we, we on work, all this? We are in collaboration <laughs> with Nema. We call them the father agency, but FCT is our own territory, <laughs> and we have to get hold of it. <laughs> so well done. we have the zonal operations office of Nema. We have our stakeholders. We work with them, and let me tell you. You see, Nigeria Hydrological Agency and NIMED, we follow their predictions religiously. We work with them, we partner with them, and on daily basis, we are always in touch with them. There's hardly a program. Is it the stakeholders meeting that we hold, or the re uh, reactivation meeting that we hold with our Fl vanguards and Fl the Fl Fl Florence, We hold such meetings with them. We make sure yes. we have the representative. DG is always with There is us. no doubt about that. And, and, and the same thing uh, with Nyman uh, yes, and no, Nema. Hold on. There is no doubt about that. And, and from all that you have said, we've seen, we've, I mean, we can conclude that FCT is indeed trying. Thank as you. Thank as you of course much. as the federal capital city we di we don't expect anything less, less. less. thank you very anything much anything less we don't thank really you. i mean you should set the pace you should set the pace thank you, you know for flood mitigation and management uh, the engineers uh, I i'm just wondering when you after the announcement of the outlook document and you give the letters to the state government, do you just go back and then wait for this state government, governors or government to then come to you, write to you, or is there any form of knock-on so that, you know, actions too, we can hear commissioners for environment or commissioners for whatever, speak as Lawrence is speaking and telling us some visible, you know, projects that have been done to mitigate flood that we can see and, you know, and, f and feel. You see, um, the at our own end, Nigeria had a service agency. The work we do, one is advisory. We inform like we did yesterday. We will not to stop at that. In fact, I was joking with our honorable minister. Um, we did the translation of the the document, document, the outcome of it, into three major languages. I said, oh, no, Mr. sorry, we didn't get to capture your own dialect. <laughs> is, is it less? I say it's late to capture it now for, for this. So we carry out sensation program in major locations, I mean zones that uh, have been fingered in the prediction as where it's going to be quite uh, high. We do that. We don't just stop do the prediction. Yes, it is advisory because we cannot enforce anything. Each of the states has its own state emergency management agency, has this of uh, in, uh, environment, environment of water resources, and even they are like we call their own here development control. They have their stamp planning authorities in the states, which should be able to carry our document and work with it. So we don't do enforcement to come and ask whether this thing we said have you been able to implement it, but we do the much we can by informing them followed up with a, a sensation program i recall one nice experience we had some years ago 
we prepare from our zone and also from the city, gather the people. But they started rebuffed us as it were. That they need all they need, the, the, even the head of state emergency management agency. We brought some money. These are local chiefs or the traditional rulers of these local government areas. Please, this is for them to come to the city where we are going to hold the event. So that when they go back, they will go and disseminate the information. It was not a, a good story for us, but eventually we came anywhere, but you couldn't see the people we are looking for. Unfortunately, you trust the journalists. Immediately we left, we left there around the, uh, I think, 22nd of uh, July that year. By 27th, the news went, journalists wrote, I won't call the name, so so person's house, just the, the prominent people that are from that area, vice president, central bank governor, uh, gov governor on seat, communities have been submerged. That was the place we went that they, they, they didn't actually attend to us. But within less than a week of our doing our program there and going, this report on what happened eventually within a week, that such locations were submerged by flood and totally destroyed. The, the so they, they said they wanted to us to come and give them relief material. We said it is the work of your state to give our uh, only to tell you don't stay here. This area that will be flooded. Yes, because we, we tend to wait for time for emergencies and then you look that for the relief materials response. you want. Why are we not proactive? Professor yes. Daniel. Yes, I don't know. Whether it's our culture, I don't know. Let me tell you one thing. The Nymet is like our fortune teller and then the Nysa is our time crier. Now, they tell us what they see. Now, the National Water Resources Institute, we double into what they say and then see the outlook, the outcome, and also what should we expect in case such a thing happen. If it doesn't happen, why? So we do research into all this. Now when we come out with our research finding, we send to states. Let me tell you, all they tell us, in fact most states that even got this and we say, acknowledge, thank you. That's all. That is all. But incidentally, we are research people. We don't stop because we want to add on to our knowledge. If a state is not ready, okay, no problem. But we still go on to do this. Things. All the flooding events you have in Nigeria, he's aware of it. We have reports from the Federal Minister, Federal, uh, I mean, National Water Resources Institute. We send to the states what should be done, why this has happened, where to do this. Things. We don't have response from them at all. It's only Jigawa, the by yes, sir. Okay. So, so, at, so yeah. what do you do? But it doesn't stop us from doing what we are supposed to do because mm. it's part of our responsibility. Okay. A, uh, a 2023 committee was set up by President Tinubu and uh, it mandated to work on all flood-related issues. I don't know if you have... What, what, what are the submissions, if you know the submission of the committee? Well, uh, there was one before that okay which i chaired that was by former president then the other one this current one you're talking about which is under the office of the vice president i also chaired the technical working group if these are the reports you are talking about mm -hmm. we made submissions and provide solutions on what to do what are some of these submissions well structural and non-structural event in fact it's for the mitigation of the disaster arising from flood because you can't prevent flood so and we have about 10 strategies okay. on how to approach them. As we mentioned, early warning, structural, this, some many other things, even jingles and some of this. And the responsible agencies for dissemination of this, we also mentioned them. The actions to be taken, all of them. Source of funding, then categorization of floods. As he said, that certain floods may be severe, some may not be severe. So we categorize the floods in Nigeria. Which floods are big enough for federal government to react? Okay. But certain floods can be controlled by the region. If the state can manage a flood, then we don't come to federal. Mm -hmm. So we even categorize them that way. Okay. And then place the responsibility under a, a, a and the source of funds. Everything is provided. 
We are waiting for government to tell us what else to do. After that. Professor Dan, we, we, we have to quickly, um, you know, take just a few more questions before we wind down. And I'm um, just looking at some of the uh, high uh, impact states. Uh, in fact, uh, most of them are, you know, food producing states. So this really have quite enormous implication on our food security if these states don't take action. You see, in 2022, I was in my office, somebody called me, one journalist. He said he was talking with a governor. I said, why do this water that keep devastating your state? What do you do with it? He said, the governor told him, go and ask engineers. <laughs> so the journalist now, well, it is a hierarchy journalist, former media to the, to the president. After the talking with him, he came up, he has a call every Thursday. So that particular one he came up with, he said 20 billion cubic meters of disaster. 20 million, sorry, 200 billion cubic meters of disaster. 200 billion, 200 cubic, billion cubic, cubic meters, meters billion. of disaster. Yes. Water. Yeah, that's how he tattooed it. That's how he tattooed of disaster. 200, 200 billion cubic, cubic meters of disaster. disaster. What is he saying? Yes. I've been part of negotiating with other countries. Trapezian users, owners of Liberia, Niger, as to how much water they should allow to come to, because we are at the bottom, from uh, Guinea Conakry to Mali yes. to Niger to Benin, and so on right. and so forth. Eventually, come to Nigeria. We say, don't take so much volume of that volume of water in, your, in Mali, so that so that in Niger we get, so that Benin we get, and so on. They will ask us because they know what comes to you. Do you use it? But every year we lose close to two hundred billion cubic meters of fresh water to the Atlantic Ocean. Mm. So why do you ask us not to take as much as we want to take in, in Niger, in Mali, in Guinea? So what am I saying in terms of food security? Mm. We have advised states to construct det detention basins. What is this? It's, we have all kinds of people that are quite knowledgeable on what should be done. Scientists, professional people, engineers, and so on and so forth. That you can build the diversion canals, as I may call it from the rivers, mm -hmm. take it some kilometers away to very large expanse of land and build a basin there. So that when the water is passing your territory at a certain threshold, instead of causing flooding, mm -hmm. it will divert to that area. A kind of tanks, yes. a battle of it, a lot of them, right from KB states coming down to Niger, right from uh, Adamawa, Teraba, Benue. At the appropriate time of the year, such water will be released for year-round irrigated agriculture. But we allow it to pass our territory. It's like a goal. Go to other countries of the world that don't have, like someone will tell you about it in Kenya. It has not a particular region. It hasn't run for about three. It doesn't run up to maybe up to, uh, uh, maybe say a month in a year. Animals, I was there one time. Animals die off. Wow. But here we have it in, in abundance. We don't make use of it. And these are not quite expensive. Yeah. Or are they? It's not now. It is not. Maybe so, just. Uh, Jabilek, sorry, Jabilek is artificial. We are rested that water that is there. We kept it there. Okay. So okay. we can do so. It's not in other places. Yes. Yes. Prof. It's, yes. The, because this is a national issue and it's also a policy issue. And I think we have to be very serious about it now. Sometimes we blame the external countries bothering us, yeah. depriving us of water or giving us too much. He is aware of it. The total volume of water that uh, you say 20 billion, uh, 200 billion by going to the ocean, mm. which is true. The total volume of renewable water in Nigeria from our master plan is 374 billion cubic meters. 374 billion cubic meters of water. 88 billion is what comes from outside, outside Nigeria into Nigeria. So 250 something, if you, you uh, subtract is generated within Same Nigeria idea. as an internally generated water resources potential within Nigeria. So our reliance on external water supply is only 20 something percent, which we can do without. Now what are we doing with the internally generated water resources? Which comes from just plateau, highlands in the Kanu, the Woody Hills, the Bene Massif, the Cameroon Mountains, all these things are within Nigeria. They have no riparian constraint. They originate from Nigeria and end in Nigeria. So we don't have any responsibility to any other country. 
the little one coming from Chad, I mean uh, Benway, and uh, into Nigeria. Yeah, they, they have no major consequence because those countries above us there have the riparian law okay. binding them to send us water. A certain percentage of that water must come. But the major one that we do not use that is generated within the country. Mm. I, I, I'm just, I'm just wondering again. Maybe, maybe Florence will take this because the we we can help climate-induced flood. I mean, the, the, it's 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 nature. But we can address and probably, you know, uh, put our hands on or put a hold on human, you know, uh, in the, uh, at, at activities. Now, I, I'm I'm just wondering is. Is there a um, plan by the FCT to ensure that human-induced flood is checked such that next year we would only have to face, you know, issues? Oh, exactly. Very well. And that is why I said structures have been put in place, like the removal of obstructions. That's the first thing. We remove all obstructions on waterways. That is one. Secondly, you, we're just talking about evacuation of uh, waste products mm -hmm. and um, refuse that have been dumped indiscriminately. We are trying to discourage that. And that is why you will find um, Department of Environmental Protection Board, they have tax force going around, these people hogging pure water and others, because, because when, once they just buy the pure water or a bottle of water on the road, they just drink it and then quickly trash it from the window or wherever they are, they dump it there. They are, they are arresting them now, they are picking them up. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we have encouraged all the six area councils to go back to this um, last Saturday environmental sanitation. We, have, we are trying to put that in place. In actual sense, two area councils have started that, Kwali and Buari. They have started that uh, end of month, last Saturday's environmental sanitation. So it's part of the things that we have put in place to because they are part, and then farming activities by the river banks, building of houses by river banks or on waterways. We are discouraging that. That's are you are you doing. also are you also discouraging indiscriminate uh, creating of dump sites because you find dump sites even those by the by the highway you you know anywhere yes. are you also looking at we that we have specific dump sites in the outskirts we have different locations we have one behind Lube the end of Lube there's a dump site there and towards Kubwa axis between Kubwa and Buari we have another dump site there. The same thing in Nyanya, uh, Nyanya and Karu, Aziz, we have another dump site there. And after all set and done, what we do is sometimes we get there, you know, right now we are encouraging people to, on this uh, recycling of uh, okay, waste. waste. So after they must have picked what they want to pick, then we burn it. That's what we do. Okay. So that you can see, you can see that the Department of but Environment. How do you manage all these scavengers that you, the leaders around? Scavengers, around we are working towards because even removing are, them completely uh -huh. because they are part of the problems we have that leads to some of these um, uh, blockage of drainages. You can see that most of the manhole covers are captured away. Mm -hmm. Of recent, I think early last year. A friend of mine almost lost her leg. She was she just came out from the church and she was walking, not knowing that they have removed the, man, the manhole. We'll come that was how one of the legs just got there. And, the and this woman is an elderly woman, over 60 years. Mm. Then apart from the, the manhole covers, we have these warning signs that we have mounted at vulnerable locations. Scavengers scattered away with it. Now we are thinking of uh, uh, using concrete to do such warning signs. And apart from that, we, we also, these temporary barricades that we have, do you know that we got to some of the locations, they remove the barricades. 
All right, uh, the iron bars, the iron rods. So we are pleading with the residents of FCT to kindly cooperate with us. Okay, because I just, they just, help us I just out. wanted Even to how do you carry al along the communities you know, to we, watch over all these facilities yes, against we tried, vandalization? We have tried our best and to make sure that the com each community claim ownership. And that is why we carried out sensitization and we have collaborated with traditional rulers in all the six area councils, different communities. In Florence, area Florence council, sorry, sorry, we, we, to we, we, have to, we have to go. We have to Thank go. Thank you very we much. We are almost uh, done. Florence uh, <laughs> Wenegeme, Director, Forecasting, Response and Mitigation, FCT Emergency Management Agency, FEMA. Thank you very much. Uh, we do appreciate you. Professor Emmanuel Adano, DG, me. National Water Resources Institute. We appreciate you, sir. Thank and you of course, uh, Engineer Clement Nze, DG, Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency, NISA. Always a pleasure to have thank you on our program. Thank you. My All right. Thank you. Well, that's Good Morning Nigeria for today. Thanks for joining us. I am Ademola Adoye. Claire, <laughs> and good I'm to have Claire. you once again. <laughs> and I'm Claire. So, so clear the air. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right.